Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Tigorso here with Girin, and we are on the Monster Bear server. That's right, we're hanging out on here because uh, we have a few things that we need to get done on here. Um, we did this, uh, we did our live stream uh, from here on Saturday, and we realized that we are pretty much Minecraft broke. Um, there is, we don't really have much of anything whether it be, you know, material or, you know, building blocks, redstone, you know, we have some redstone, but, you know, we need more diamonds, we need all that stuff. So, since not everyone comes to the live streams, I figure I would do a little catch up, go over what we did uh, on Saturday, and for those of you who weren't able to be there, you guys don't have to miss out on it. Now, you may have noticed this giant thing over here. This is what I was working on on Saturday. This is our floating platform. Um, we spawned in a ocean biome, so this little island down here is pretty much all the land that we have. So we had to create a little bit of land. Um, so we did this. It's a 128 diameter circle that's not quite complete yet. I still have about a quarter of it, quarter of the circle left uh, to do. Um, but I was able to fill in about half of it with thanks to uh, or with help from uh, other people, monsters, Landru. Um, I'm forgetting the names escaping me. Drafoid, thank you, thank you. Um, Drafoid helped us out, and they were great help, and we really appreciate it. But that's pretty much what we did all day. And Garen also built this in his spare time because we had the cows, and we had this little tiny wheat farm over here. So we decided that what we're going to do is we're going to build the new uh, updated version 3 uh, of the chicken farm. And this is it. All these clucking chickens over here. Um, this is the updated version that we will probably be releasing a tutorial on uh, soon. Um, it's working wonderfully. As you can see, <laughs> there's a chicken in here. There's a stack. Plus, I've got a stack on me. Garen's got a stack on him. Um... There's a lot going on over here. It works really well. We're really happy with it. We've got plenty of chicken to keep us full uh, during our little adventure that we're about to go on. And you guys will just have to wait a little bit longer and you will get a full tutorial so you can have one of your own. So that was uh, pretty exciting. I was glad to log in and have chicken for once and a full stack of it so I don't have to worry about it for a while, which is definitely good. So... The plan today is we are going to go on a tiny little adventure. I think that we're going to go off in this direction. Yeah, let's go ahead and make a day. Um, we're going to head off into this direction, and we are going to try and find a nice cave to go caving in. And uh, me and Garen are going to work together. No competition this time. No ABBA rules or anything like that, because... We are working as a team. So hopefully we are going to shuffle off in a direction over here. And we're going to find something awesome. Hopefully that has a nice big cave system, lots of diamonds and, you know, things that we want and need. So while we do that, um, I'm going to talk about a couple things. Um, oh, hey, squids. Um, if you guys have not seen the outcome of the Super Bowl or you like T-vote it and you haven't watched it yet, you're probably going to want to stop watching now and then come back and watch this uh, after you've done and watched the game because I'm going to talk about the game. So you got to I'm going to give you a minute so you can stop watching. OK, so. I'm not, okay, looks like there's a cave over here. Let's just park, woo, come on. All right, there we go. Make sure, oh, there we go, got it back. Um, so I'm not a huge sports fan, sports fan but um, one of the things I do enjoy is watching uh, Super Bowl and you know World Series and things like that. Because while I don't necessarily care to watch um, the regular season games, I do enjoy uh, ooh, skelly already. Jeez. 
I do enjoy watching the um, the the series is, you know, the the big games where, you know, you, you get to get to pick a side and hopefully one of them wins. So um, I did have a pretty good time. Uh, now, I'm I'm from California, so I had to root for the 49ers. Um, unfortunately, they didn't they didn't really uh, do as well as I would have hoped um, during the first during the first half of the game, they didn't really do spectacular. Um, I was I was kind of disappointed. I was hoping it was going to be a more um, uh, more exciting game at the beginning, uh, but thankfully in the second half it really picked up after a mysterious power outage. Um, I think maybe one of the teammates had stuck into the back and turned off the lights to a uh, half the freaking stadium. <laughs> Um, which was which was really interesting. Caused about a half hour of delay. Um, uh, I can't tell. No, they're. I don't. I don't know. They're white to me. I can't. I can't freaking tell. My stupid texture pack is broken. No, oh, no, I fell down. Um, let me get down here. See what these babies are. All right. Um, so that was. That was a little exciting. Uh, so there was sort of like a a double double halftime thing going on, and uh, the other team or the teams got a little bit of a break. Though I'm probably sure that they would have liked to have not had that break. So, but anyways, it was a good game. It finished off uh, real strong, uh, which I thought was was nice. Sort of made up for the first half being a little dull. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, San Francisco lost. Um, it's Sunday, so I haven't really been watching uh, the news afterwards because I spent all day in front of the freaking TV. Um, so I'm pretty sure that right now Bay Area is on fire because people are rioting uh, in Oakland and uh, may maybe the Bay Area. I don't know. I wouldn't think so, but you never know. Um, so... It'll be sort of interesting to see what sort of uh, destruction and mayhem is occurring as we speak. So I thought that was that's pretty funny. It's sort of the joke in California. Everybody riots whenever <laughs> a team loses. Um, but yeah, so that was that was how we spent uh, our Sunday. Not exactly uh, super exciting, but it was wasn't a complete waste of time. It, it proved to have some some merit there at the end. So, all right. Whoa. Hey, creeper. No. I didn't. Ooh, a potato. I love potatoes. Ooh, that one has a flame bow. <laughs> no, this is bad. Oh, and knockback. These, these new um, skeletons. Watch out, Garen. There's a skeleton behind you. Um, these new skeletons are actually um, pretty, pretty damn scary. Um, they can have enchanted bows and can do some pretty pretty gnarly damage. Um, they are really aggressive. They shoot really fast, and uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot a freaking bucket. That glowing lava just reminded me that I do not have a bucket. Um, so you really got to be careful. Uh, when you're around skeletons, um, you gotta make sure you're well armed. You gotta make sure you have armor because these guys will kill you. And uh, you know, just like that guy, he has knockback on his bow, so he will, you know, keep hitting me back. And they can have, you know, power and flame. Uh, naturally, they have infinity um, because they they get to shoot forever, and you know, they don't have to worry about arrows or anything like that. Um, but you know, you know me. Um, I'm always thinking about how uh, those sorts of things uh, are will affect the outcome of ultra hardcore, and it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, the oh, it's a bat. Um, the skeletons actually seem to drop a uh, a bow a lot more often than it than it used than they used to. 
So somebody could very well get an enchanted bow early on in the game if they happen to take on a skeleton and survive. Um, though in Ultra Hardcore with the new uh, skeletons, I'm not really sure that that would be a fantastic idea. Um, because, yeah, they will mess you up. And every single heart in Ultra Hardcore counts. So, whoa. See, and these creepers, they're not, they're not too scary. They're the same old creepers that we know, so they haven't changed all that much. All right, let's see here. Whoa! Oh no, I'm stuck. Ah! See, and he's just like plunking away at me. And I have, I don't have the best armor on right now, but he was still a zombie villager. He was still able to do, do some damage at me. He's a crupper. Oh man, I need to... Whoa! Oh man, this is, this is dangerous. This area up here, all, all these mobs. Get out of here. Alright. Need to get out of here. Get someplace else. Alright, this is better. Don't like getting stuck in water like that, so... Alright, let's end a pearl. Damn, lots of mobs down here. All right, good again. Um, but let's see, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? Um, but eh, well, I guess we can talk about more Minecraft stuff because me and Gear were talking about that the other day, and uh, you know, we were thinking, you know, oh jeez, oh, you know, they're changing a lot of stuff with this 1.5 update, and uh, you know, one of the things we were talking about is how. Whoa. One of the things that we were talking about is how the um, the new hoppers uh, fundamentally changed the game in ways that um, you know haven't haven't really been done before. It adds uh, a whole new layer of you know automation, but also it changes the way that you know we have to think about and plan you know builds and things like that because it opens up a lot of additional functionality that we didn't have before, which I think is actually pretty cool. Um, you know, like we've got that chicken farm uh, that we've got going on that we've been working that we've been working on that we're real proud of. Something that we never really would have been able to do um, beforehand or before 1.5. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, that led us to think, you know, well, what else could we get? You know, I remember, uh, I think it was B-double-O was talking about how uh, Mo Yang keeps sort of like these things in their back pockets um, because they always want to be adding to the game. They always want to be updating and they need, you know, some things. So they can't go like adding like, you know, 10 million features uh, all at once because they would have run out of stuff to do pretty soon. Um so they keep things in their back pockets. Um, one of the things he said was, I think it, um, it was like half slabs, like uh, nether brick half slabs, um, and a couple other things. Um, so, you know, and then eventually we got those those half slabs. So me and Garen were sort of trying to guess maybe, you know, you know what was in what was in the Mo Yang playbook? What, what do they have up their sleeves? And, uh, you know, it's impossible to tell, but we were sort of thinking about, whoa! Hey, Skelly. You scared me. Um, you know, what would be cool? You know, and one of the things that we thought would be interesting would be, uh, you know, new biomes. Because we've had, we've had the same biomes for, you know, uh, quite a while. And I think some new variation to the map generation would actually be a pretty cool addition. Um, Giren said that he wanted to see volcanoes, which I thought was... Uh, pretty cool. Um, oh, that's 16. That's not what I wanted. There we go. That's good enough. See, look at that. Look at that. I killed a skeleton. I got a bow. I need to ditch that, though. I don't need it. See, I'm gonna sand that. Then I'll keep the potato. The spider eye. I'll get rid of that. Uh, get rid of that. All right. That's good. Um, so, you know, I, I think I remember somebody had a uh, experimental volcano or something like that 
I think it was Seth Lang. He used like a spawner and stuff like that. And I thought that that would, uh, yeah, I thought that was that was a pretty a pretty neat idea, something that they could add into the game. You know, uh, have uh, blocks spawn. You know where the volcano is, and uh, Garen actually came out uh, or came out came up with a, a good idea, and uh, and it related to something that we had been talking about, which was a uh, a damage block like lava that didn't uh, create light. And uh, he thought that, you know, having uh, acid, you know, having this volcano and having water that generates around it turn to acid would actually be really cool. And I agree. I think that would be a pretty cool idea. Um, you know, you can you can take it, you know, it'll be sort of, you know, sort of like greenish, maybe, um, maybe brownish, you know, Ooh, a ravine. Or some gold over there. Oh, hey guy. Whoa! No, 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 no. Um, let's go ahead and light this up. So you know, I thought that was a pretty, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, and then you know, having like lava, and then you know, uh, new blocks like you know, maybe some new metals, new building materials. Um, they gave us that with quartz which I am very, very thankful for. I love quartz. That stuff is awesome. Um, but you know, maybe like some new, some new metals like uh, titanium, you know, or silver or something like that. And then uh, also a function uh, to go along with them. That's always fun. Once you, once you have something, because there's so many different things uh, that you can, you can add into the game. I mean, you literally, you can add in anything. Um, but finding a function for them is important. Um, one of the things that uh, we came up or that we thought of was uh, a new tool called some, something like a hammer. Uh, it would sort of like de deconstruct blocks. So like if you had, um, if you had uh, bricks, you could break it with a hammer and it would turn back into cobble, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, you know, just, just little things like that. You know, I think that that's sort of fun. I mean, that's one of the things about Minecraft that's so great is that you can do uh, anything. And they do do anything, which is awesome. Need to light this up more. To get better at lighting. I'm terrible at, at making sure I get rid of all these dark spaces. Garen's much better at it. That's why I usually let him do it. And which is... Probably conversely why I'm so bad at it. <laughs> All right. But those are just a couple cool things uh, that we were talking about. And, you know, because the game is changing. And that's one of the things that, that really attracted me um, to Minecraft when I first started playing was the fact that uh, so many things change so often. And it's not, it's not hard to keep up with. Um, I mean, if you look at the game, you know, back in, like, the beta days, you know, that was before... I was playing but you know it's completely different games so many game mechanics have changed but it changed in a way that was that was easy to keep up with so if you were new to the game you know it was easy to pick up and if you had been playing the game the changes weren't so drastic that you know you didn't feel like you were completely lost well I can't really say that but that's the feeling that I get when people talk about you know the old days it was a, it was a slow sort of gradual change rather than you know big abrupt you know disruption of everything all at once all right let's see i'm gonna hop over here and get me this iron um i think the only time where it was really an abrupt change was when they changed the the mapping structure because i remember um a lot of people talking about how they lost maps and things like that and Etho famously lost his chocolate island during that as well. I believe it was chocolate island. Pretty sure. But, you know, that those instances se seem to be few and far between. Hey, zombie. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh keep this gold down here. This stuff is useful. And you know, let's just go down into the ravine. 
So see some goodies down here I want. Lapis, definitely something that I want. I love this lapis stuff. Goes really well together with redstone. Look at that. <laughs> lapis and redstone together, a natural combination. These new redstone blocks are amazing. Ah, and let's see. Ooh, here's a continuation. I thought that was the end. Um, let's see. What else did I got on here? Um, so like I said earlier, you guys can expect to see uh, more on that chicken farm from us. Uh, we are going to be doing a tutorial um, that's going to uh, you know, teach you guys how to... Oh no, that's a bummer. Uh, teach you guys exactly how to build it so that you can have one of your own. Which is something that uh, a lot of people requested uh, in the last video. Uh, both in the video and to us uh, privately um, but we're sort of glad that we didn't uh, we didn't do one right away and that we did sort of the, just the design video because there there were some problems and we're glad that we got those things hammered out we solved the issues and concerns that people had and uh, we feel that we feel that it's ready it's ready to go so we're, we're eager to share it with you guys um, you know, we've solved, uh, we've solved some tricky things and it works very well. Yeah. <laughs> People say that, oh, why don't you use cobwebs? Uh, you know, and we're like, well, we don't need cobwebs. So we didn't use cobwebs. <laughs> that was what, that's what the, the two day timer is for. Yeah. Doc already did that. If that's what you want to use, then and then I'm sure he's got, you know, a great uh, a great way to do it. Um, ours is a little bit different, and you know, we like it. Oh, sh damn gravel! Um, and you know, we're not saying the docks is bad. You know, uh, docks actually looks cool. We saw it in his uh, in uh, one of his videos, but we wanted something small, compact, and for people who want that, you know, ours would be a, a, a good choice. So, you know, that we want people to have the option to, uh, to build it if they so want, because, you know, like I said, a lot of people showed a lot of interest in it. So we're, uh, there we go. Need more coal. So we are looking forward to getting you guys what you want. So that will be coming out, um, hopefully sometime this week. I'm not going to make a promise. Um, because I'm going to be pretty busy this week uh, with different things that I have to do. So I may not be able to get to it. Um, we're just going to have to see. But I'm going to work really hard for you guys. Because I know how much you guys want it. Um, so we are going to be working on that, rest assured. Alright, let's clear out this node here. It's been forever since I've had to go caving. Uh, you know, actually, I would I would really like it if we could get the um, if we could get the uh, what's it called the bread machine working again. That would be that would be super cool because that is a machine that I really liked. It was really convenient, um, and you know, it's sort of like it's sort of like part of our our thing. You know, our oh well, that's gone. Uh, it's part of our world, so I would like to have it working again, rather than just leaving it there and being like, oh yeah, this doesn't work anymore. So I would really like that. All right, please don't die. Whew. All right. Well, there's nothing over here. <laughs> that sucks. So glad I didn't end up in that lava pool. All right. But yeah, the uh, definitely the uh, the bread maker. Definitely. Um, all right, I need to find a way out of here. This looks good. See, there's more iron over there, but I want to try and find somewhere else to go. There we go. Head down this way. Um, I know I've talked about it before in my Kegercraft videos. Um, I'm a big, uh, techie and all oh, lag. One of the things that, that I really like is the fact that uh, Google is trying a lot of really cool, um, sort of like almost like futurist technologies. There you are. 
I knew you were around here somewhere. Um, and one of those things is the driverless car, but also they have this thing called Google Glass. Zombies coming down from everywhere. Oh, hey guys. I wonder if there's a spawner around here. Or is it just dark? Huh, looks like it's just dark. Oh well. Um, and uh, I was talking about, oh, Google Glass, yeah. I was reading an article about how Google Glass, oh geez, that guy's got an enchanted bow, ow, uh, recently went through its paces on the FCC, which was really cool. Um, that is, if any electronic device that uses a uh, wireless signal has to go through the uh, Federal Communications uh, Commission, which is a U.S. agency that monitors uh, the wireless airwaves, both uh, licensed and unlicensed airwaves. Um, so if it's it, it's going to have wireless, obviously. So it's got to get approval before it can start being used. Um, and having it go through the FCC is a big step towards um, taking it to market. Now, I don't really think that it's going to come to market anytime soon. Um, but having a, a wireless device certified by the FCC is not... Um, it's not cheap or, um, you know, an easy process to go through. They really, really put these things through their paces and make sure that, um, you know, they don't have any adverse unintended effects, you know, like causing radio interference to important things or, you know, uh, well, it's mainly just monitoring interference and to make sure that these devices follow the, the rules and the law. So, you know, that pretty much says to me that they're really serious about this. Um, before, I was sort of like, I was sort of like, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe this thing will come out. Maybe it's just a toy that they're playing with. Because Google does that a lot. Google has a lot of toys that they spent, you know, money on developing, but never really, never really released. Or just sort of never really caught on. And, you know, they never really did anything with it. Um, and I sort of looked at it as a, uh, a sort of a Microsoft courier thing. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, the Microsoft courier was this sort of like tablet device, this dual screen tablet device before tablets were really a thing. Um, you know, I think it was like in the first iPad generation or something like that, or it, maybe it was even before the iPad. I don't really remember. Um, but it was so cool. And I remember, uh, I was going through a bunch of engineering classes um, at the time, and I was like, "I need this." Like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't have really cared how much it cost. I needed that thing, and I remember when they announced that it wasn't a thing. I was really, really upset um, because when I was in school, I had this. Geez, zombies all over the place. I had this engineering journal that I kept, you know, circuitry diagrams. Um, oh, I kept uh, circuitry diagrams, uh, you know, um, lists of like, you know, resistor color bands and all sorts of just little, little knick-knacky stuff that um, I needed to know, but was, you know, sort of a little bit more on the tedious side. Um, and you know, like lots of calculations and how to do logarithms, and it was it was pretty uh, it was pretty ooh, it was pretty thick by the time I had finished. Um, and I was like, if I could digitize this journal, it would be something that I would keep forever because it was incredibly useful. Um, unfortunately, it it never really came to pass, and I was really really bummed out because I wanted it so bad i was like i was that fry meme i was throwing my money at the screen and just yelling take my money take my money um uh, let's see i don't get around this ender bro oh crap uh whoo um so when they announced that it was just a an idea and it was never really going to see the light of day i cried a little inside i wanted it so bad 
Um, so, you know, it was sort of, Google Glass is sort of like that to me. Um, it's one of those things where I'm like, ooh, I really, really want this. This could be something that, that you know, I would really like to have. But I'm sort of taking a uh, skeptical approach to it. Maybe we'll never see it, you know. Um, it's It's hard to say. But having it go through, having Google Glass go through the FCC is an encouraging step. So... I will eagerly be watching that because hell yeah, I want one. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um it's it's got bone conducting audio. So and and I think that this is this is actually really fascinating, but um I guess what happens is is like you can have you can have multiple different types. Like when you're speaking, if you put your hand um on like the back of your jaw, you can feel it vibrate. Well, um I guess, I, and I don't necessarily know if this is true or if I'm remembering it correctly, um, but my my uh, engineering teacher explained that um, the way that sound moves, one of the reasons why um, our voices sound different um, to us than they do to everyone else is uh, one, uh, echo. Um, it takes time for our voices to go out and to hit our ears. And also, um, there's a vibration that moves through our jaw that slightly uh, changes the tone of our voice. Um, and the bone conducting stuff, uh, bone conducting audio sort of plays on that. Um, there are a couple Bluetooth headsets that do this. Um, one of them is called the Jawbone or something like that. Um, and it, it presses against the side of your head. There's no traditional speaker. Um, it's just this little... Uh, vibration thing that that vibrates your skull and you hear sound <laughs> but there's no sound it's it's really cool um i've actually never used it so <laughs> yeah it, kind of yeah it's sort it sort of works on the same premise it's just vibrations and you hear weird stuff uh, when you vibrate your skull whoa mystery lava hello um be careful around here. There's a lava pool. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, it's it's exactly the same thing. Um, I think I saw one for kids. That was that was actually kind of weird. Oh, I mean, like like in a, in a commercial, like a couple years ago, they would like play like the latest pop tunes, and uh, it was it was a little interesting. Um. And let's see. So that's apparently how it's going to do audio, which is nice because um, I'm, I'm a little bit on the deaf side. So I tend to listen to my music um, pretty, pretty loud. And, you know, I get some weird looks sometimes. Um, so it would be nice to have, you know, the privacy to listen to your music without judgmental looks on, you know, when you're listening to it, like, People asking you, what are you listening to? That sounds like crap. It's just noise and stuff. Oh, shush you. Judgmental bears are judgmental. Um, but, you know, that's something that, that I thought was, was cool and noteworthy about it. Um, just another way that Google's trying to change things up and, and challenge the perceptions of what is normal, which I like. And whether or not it works out, I don't know. I've never actually had one of those um, bone conducting speakers before. So I don't know if it sucks or not. There has got to be a zombie spawner around here somewhere. I killed a bat. Oh no. Let's see if we can find it. Whoa! Friggin' suicide. Suicide skeletons up in here with freaking enchanted bows. See, these guys are crazy. He's probably still chasing after me. Uh, let's see here. I am at 1838, uh, 855. All right. So I'm actually liking this cave. We haven't found any diamonds yet, but that's okay. You know, we, we do need coal and we found some iron. Oh, you've ha you have diamonds? Very nice, very nice. 
awesome. Um, so let's see. I can still go on here for a little while. I've still got some stuff to talk about. Let's see here. What was the last thing? Oh, yes. And this is actually something I talked about on the stream. And, uh, you know, I thought I thought it was kind of interesting uh, because it sparked some good conversation uh, on Saturday. But it was about the um, the rumored, and I say this with, you know, the most skepticism, the rumored announcement on February 20th about the PlayStation 4 um, code named the Orbis. Um, and I mentioned this, and I said that I was a little bit skeptical. I really, for me, it's weird to see a company like Sony say that they are going to announce um, a major console. And they, they didn't say that. I'm going to take that back. They didn't say that they were going to announce a console. But people are speculating that they are. Um, piss this guy off. Um, you know, and not announce it at something like E3, where they normally do that stuff. Um, I mean, I guess there's both sides to this sort of story. Um, there's two, two schools of thought. I am of the school of thought that, you know, why would they do this? It seems sort of silly. They would want... Damn skeleton. They would want the publicity from everybody talking about, you know, games and things like that, um, you know, during the show. And then some people feel that it's it's a good idea to do it separately because then they'll be the only thing that the gaming world is talking about and that's all that they really care about. So, I mean, I can see both points to that. This is freaking scaring me. Um, I can see both points to that. Um, but I think that it would be smarter for Sony to wait until they got to E3 to announce um, the next PlayStation. And the reason why I say that is because they said, Sony said that they wanted to wait to let Microsoft make the first move. So if unless they've changed their mind, I don't think that February 20th is going to bring us a new um a new PlayStation. Now what it might bring us is something else in the PlayStation family. I'm thinking that they might be bringing out a revamped Vita, which would make uh, a bit more sense um because the current Vita is not exactly selling fantastically. So maybe it's sort of like a Vita Lite. Um, or something along those lines. Uh, I got smooth stone in here. I guess not. Um, and that would make a lot more sense to me. And I sort of, I'm sort of worried um, about people getting their hopes up and you know expecting because I've seen a lot of places talk about this, and I have seen absolutely no justification for it uh, that Sony's going to announce a PlayStation 4, and I think that people might be disappointed. And that's going to hurt Sony negatively. Um, the bear. So it's just one of those things where, I mean, it would be cool if they came out with a PlayStation 4. But unless somebody has uh, a sort of like real source and not just, you know, we think postulation, then I do don't really think it's going to happen, and I'm afraid it's going to hurt Sony in the long run. Um, uh, no, I don't think so, but um, they're coming out with a new one anyways. I guess. I don't know. I don't really think that they need a new console. I think the PlayStation 3 works just fine, but... Ah, crap. I didn't want to do that. But... Um, you know, there there was an in instance of uh, rumor hurting a company, and that was uh, Microsoft. Um, people who, yeah, I think I think the main reason why 
they're changing the the PS3 is because of the architecture. The um the chip that they used makes it hard to develop for it because the instruction set is weird. Um, so I'm thinking that might be the reason behind it. <laughs> Fine, be like that. Um, but another company that that got damaged quite significantly on a major product release from uh, rumors was Microsoft. Um, their recent release of the um, Surface tablet was significantly damaged by rumors because people were saying that it was going to cost 200 bucks for the Surface RT, which is the uh, the basic uh, ARM version, and it turned out to be like five, six hundred bucks. And you know, people, you know, the the 200 dollar rumor had had so much weight behind it that even though Microsoft never ever said anything about it it significantly damaged their product launch and the perception of their of their equipment so i hope that that doesn't happen cuz i would like to see more parity among the uh, the consoles i like to see a more even footing between the xbox and the playstation to be honest um in some instances yeah actually they can actually do quite a bit of harm because they, they're they sort of like kids in a candy store, to be honest. They take a, a rumor, and it doesn't have to have an ounce of truth in it, but yet they will run with it. Because, I don't know, they heard it on a forum, or, you know, somebody said it. And, you know, their imaginations just start running wild, and, you know, they get all excited. Which, I mean, you know, that's fine if it's somebody like me, but... You know, I'm not running a, a blog with, you know, 10 million hits a day. It does create unreal, ex unrealistic expectations, and that's the problem. That's that's why um, Microsoft was damaged. Mm -hmm. The the blogs definitely do um, influence the buying habits, and not always in a positive way. Especially when you have... Oh, it's raining. That's what's going on. Um, especially when you have uh, certain tech blogs, I'm looking at you, Engadget, that are uh, kind of biased towards certain companies and their products. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how uh, how I feel about the media. I mean, obviously, I still I still read it, and I read you know Engadget and stuff like that. But um, what I do is I take it with sort of a grain of salt. Am I? Oh my gosh, my chess piece broke. Um, I take it with a grain of salt, which some people don't do. They take their word as gospel. So, yeah, we need to make some more. That's why we went here and got, you know, a whole bunch of iron, because we need to make more stuff. Um, so, I would say if you're looking forward to February 20th, you know, temper your expectations, you know, because you may. Whoa, Cripper! Cripper! I saved you um, because I don't want people to end up disappointed. So I hope I'm being a pessimist and everything turns out to be wonderful and rainbows and ponies. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, so that's going to be it for today. We have completed our... Um, let me turn the particles off here. Uh, we have completed our run and we will head back and start cooking all this stuff immediately. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, let's check out this island up here. It's beautiful. Ooh, there's some cool generation over there. Ah, see, look at this. I got two skeletons right here, and I have to go ranged against them because I'm going to die. Um, so, like I was saying, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you guys had a fun time with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.